Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to our presentation today, Exploring Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion in Physical Education. I'm Mary Thyssen Milder, and I serve as a physical education specialist at the Minnesota Department of Education. I'm happy to be partnering with MinShape and Mendape to support all the great physical education programs in our state. In the presentation today, we're going to define equity, diversity, and inclusion, or EDI, in physical education, recognize what culturally relevant instruction looks like, share some strategies physical educators are using to ensure inclusive classrooms, and identify a few resources. This slide identifies the 10 commitments to equity that apply to all Minnesota state agencies. For this particular presentation, we are highlighting three, prioritizing equity by discussing EDI through a physical education lens, valuing people by asking educators from the field to share with you their practices around EDI, and giving students options by highlighting physical educators talking about the importance of student choice. At MDE, we are working hard, both internally and externally, to implement EDI practices. We have a newly formed Center for EDI leading this charge. The mission is to advance the principles of equity, diversity, and inclusion to create the conditions for building authentic cross-cultural communities where harm is eliminated and every person's humanity is acknowledged and valued. This slide shows you the MDE EDI framework. The framework examines EDI through a critical consciousness lens. By using this lens, we are trying to increase our abilities to recognize and analyze systems of inequality, which allows us to make commitments to take actions against them. Specific to health and physical education, in 2018, our national organization, Shape America, made an intentional commitment to foster greater equity, diversity, and inclusion within programs, resources, membership, and leadership. They've worked hard to identify inequities in physical education and health and the structures holding them in place. And then in 2021, they published this article, EDI in Health and Physical Education, Breaking Down the What and the How So You Can Find Your Why. We're going to talk about the content of this article in the next few slides. In the SHAPE article, equity is defined as providing all people with fair opportunities to attain their full potential. Diversity is defined as the collective mixture of differences and similarities that includes characteristics, values, beliefs, experiences, backgrounds, and behaviors. It encompasses our personal and professional histories that frame how to see the world, collaborate with colleagues and stakeholders, and serve communities. And inclusion is defined as the active, intentional, and ongoing engagement with diversity, including intentional policies and practices that promote the full participation and sense of belonging in every person. The thing we should all keep in mind is that equity, diversity, and inclusion are interrelated, and all three are vital to create a sense of belonging, both for students in the classroom and for educators in the field. It is that sense of belonging that allows students and educators to thrive and reach their full potential. The SHAPE article identified inequities in physical education and health education through a roundtable discussion with K-12 health and physical educators, higher education instructors, and leaders from state affiliates, school districts, and state departments of education. They identified five major areas of inequalities and the structures that hold them in place. These include inequitable practices and our curricula. For example, Evaluation practices are based on skills and abilities that are not represented by all students or not having student voice in curricular decisions. 
there are limited resources and capacity to advance and prioritize EDI. For example, there's a lack of knowledge and understanding of how to advance EDI, or the school funding formula is designed intentionally to create haves and have-nots. Another issue is a non-inclusive white dominant culture. For example, there are large indigenous and BIPOC populations in the state, but rarely at the table for health education or physical education conversations. There's a lack of diversity and representation in school personnel. For example, no representation in the teaching staff, no people of color, non-white, etc. And a failure to invest in and prioritize health education and physical education by administrators, districts, or states. For example, the lack of prioritized resources and understanding of the value that health and physical education bring to the table and benefits the whole child to support their readiness to engage in learning. After developing short and long-term priorities to advance equity in their specific areas of health and physical education fields, the roundtable participants identified areas of synergy and opportunities for collaboration, which included improving access to resources and capacity building to advance EDI, engaging in a sustained conversation and action to shift paradigms and encourage culture change, establishing shared knowledge and collective action, and advocating for and reframe health physical education with an EDI lens. SHAPE acknowledges there's much more work to be done and there will be continued conversations diving deeper into the results of the roundtable to create actionable next steps. But the hope is that this will help move the entire community forward by identifying concrete steps to make lasting change in the field and foster a sense of belonging for all. So now let's talk about what physical education and health teachers can do to start or continue the EDI journey. To simplify EDI actions that can be taken in physical education, let's examine the TREE model. The TREE model is a simple and effective universal tool to help teachers adapt and modify activities to be more inclusive. The letters of TREE identify the strategies. The T is for teaching style, the R is for rules, the first E is for equipment, and the second E is for environment. Let's dive into each a little deeper. Teaching style refers to the way the activity is communicated to the students. The delivery to a group can have significant impact on how inclusive it is. Using a combination of strategies will help ensure communication is effective and appropriate. Examples include, keep instructions simple and concise, use visual aids, demonstrations, and whistles, encourage participation, teamwork, and problem solving, Use questioning to check student understanding. Move from a teacher-centered reproductive style to a more student-centered productive style. Or use multiple modes of representation, including verbal and visual. In addition, consider abilities by giving some students more time than others for task completion, partnering students with others who can help and support them, giving some students intentional leadership roles in sports and games, and letting students use physical supports in playing particular sports and games. Rules. Some students may have difficulty understanding and following the rules of a game. Rules can be simplified or changed as needed and then reintroduced as their skill level increase. To support students, you can begin activities with only a few of the rules that are easy to remember. Gradually introduce the rules one at a time once students understand the pattern or flow of the activity. Try to minimize the time between giving instructions and starting the activity. Begin teaching the activities in slow motion, for example, using a slower moving ball or restricting player movements. And instead of using official rules, choose three primary rules that everyone in the class can follow. Utilize alternative equipment. 
Some examples include the choice of size or weight of the ball to increase or reduce the level of challenge, utilizing bean bags, cush balls, or paper and tape ball for bocce balls. Use balloons, beach balls, light plastic balls, or ropes with ribbons attached for a net for net games. Utilize balls with different densities, for example, wiffle or foam balls, light, plastic, or paddle bat for field games. Finally, use small soft cushion or sponge balls, deflated beach ball for target games. Creating an environment where all students feel safe, valued, and respected, cared for, and heard should be the goal of physical educators. Within such an environment is where students can flourish and develop the knowledge, skills, and dispositions to be healthy and active over this lifespan. When planning activities, remember to consider whether or not the playing area is suitable for the mobility levels of all students. Adjust the size of the space to increase or reduce the level of challenge. It's important to ensure that the floor surface allows smooth running of wheelchairs or other mobility aids. Benches or chairs are located at specific areas and can be used by students who have difficulty standing for extended periods. Students who have experienced difficulty standing or walking can participate in activities from the floor, for example, from a sitting, kneeling, or sideline position. Playing areas are created that have more space to negotiate tasks and make them achievable. For example, increase the size of the goals to improve the chances of scoring. Now it's time to see EDI strategies put into action by practicing physical educators. In the fall of 2023, Shape America released another article in the Momentum magazine providing insights for EDI concepts from National Teachers of the Year. They answer two specific questions. What does culturally relevant instruction look like in your classroom? And what are your top strategies for creating an inclusive physical education classroom? One of the Teachers of the Year highlighted in this article was Minnesota's own Randy Spring from Liberty Ridge Elementary School in South Washington County Schools who was the 2023 National Shape Elementary Teacher of the Year. Randy is an amazing physical educator, and I'm so proud to say that Minnesota has many physical educators also implementing EDI practices in their classrooms. As a result, I asked members of the MinShape Board of Directors to answer the same questions. Rather than talk my way through their comments, I'm adding music to this section and will give you time to read their responses. As you look at the slides, you'll be able to recognize all the EDI concepts talked about earlier in this presentation. Thank 
Thank you, Shape America Teachers of the Year and Minnesota Physical Educators for sharing your thoughts about EDI concepts of culturally responsive classrooms and inclusive strategies. Now let's move on to a few EDI resources available to you. Shape America hosts an EDI podcast that explores a variety of topics relating to equity, diversity, and inclusion in health and physical education. Each episode features insightful interviews and discussions with invited guests. Some of the posted topics include an introduction to equity, diversity, and inclusion, educational equity, culturally relevant pedagogy, and what is social justice. You can find the podcasts on the Shape America website. Shape America's Health Moves Minds initiative contains standards aligned SEL focused lessons that can be easily incorporated into your existing health and physical education programs. The lessons are offered in the following grade bands, K to five, six to eight, and nine to 12. You can take a sneak peek at a lesson from the Being Mindful, Being Kind unit for grades three to five at the Shape America website. Two additional articles are also available on the site entitled Reflections on Equity, Diversity and Inclusion and Why I Embrace a More Inclusive and Empathetic Teaching Style in Physical Education. To conclude this presentation, let me leave you with this thought. The reality is the work of equity, diversity and inclusion is a lifelong journey that requires us to bring our whole selves and whole experience into the conversation, regardless of where we find ourselves on the continuum of learning about equity, diversity, and inclusion. We should be mindful of using an EDI lens in all we do. Thank all of you for your dedication and commitment to our students. You make a big difference in their lives and I want to take every opportunity I have to remind you of that. Thanks everyone.